All right, so it's uh, time to start putting the posts in now. So um, I'm going to drop this one into the uh, into the first hole. Just um, when you put it in, as you, as you put each one in, just check that you're um, that you've got enough room to move the post around with that 1,200 measurement from the from the centre nail. So I've got plenty of room there, so that's all good. Um, the depth they go in. Offset this so that when those uh, other trimmers go around, they sit about that high. So we're a little bit above the ground here. That's because uh, Peter and Linda are going to actually add some soil to this. So we want to sit everything up a bit in this case. If you were going into existing soil, then you would um, probably drop the post a little bit lower. Okay, now, once you've got that first post sitting in, in there, you can then level from the top of this post to the top of the next post. It's pretty critical that this centre hexagon is level because otherwise all the roof won't work. The outer hexagon, that's less critical, I'll talk about that later, but it's pretty important that these six posts end up with all the tops level. So we've dropped all the posts in the holes and we've levelled up the tops of them. You can use a level, water level, dumpy if you've got one, laser, any device for getting the tops of all those posts level. They don't have to be perfect, probably within about five millimetres or quarter of an inch should be fine. The next process is to get that original set out post plumb. We need it not just plumb, we need it so that it's 1200 millimetres, which was the radius of that first hexagon to the outside surface. And what I've done here at the centre is I've put a second nail in, half a post thickness out, and the same out at the side and re-pulled that string through, so the post also needs to be just sitting on that string. So I'm now going to put some more, um, more of the soil that I've dug out back in around the post, keep checking that it's in the right position and actually firm this post up so that it's nice and rigid. Um, you could, if you wanted to, concrete your posts in. I tend not to, just because that concrete once it sets around the post, forms a, a spot for the moisture to be uh, to sit in, and that actually makes the post rot out a bit quicker. So normally I just put the post back into the soil and then thump the soil down around them, normally with the back end of a crowbar or a heavy piece of timber or something like that. And that's more than adequate for this structure to, to hold it up. The next process is to um, start putting the bottom trimmers round, and they're going to hold each post in place as we go. Um, just when, when I do this first one, you can see I've um, clamped a bit of scrap onto the post there. We've already got the line that we marked out in the workshop, so I can tap that, tap that down to that. And then um, you'll find if you're using recycled hardwood, it's a little bit hard to nail straight into. So I'm going to use a pilot hole there. Now we've already got part of that pilot hole through the first piece. I'm just going to start that into the post and what that does is that stops that nail from sliding when we nail it in. Another thing you can do um, with, with the nails when you're nailing into hardwood is you can put a bit of lubricant on them. I'm just using a bit of WD-40 there and that'll help those nails go into the hardwood because um, this Australian hardwood, especially when it's a few years old like this, is uh, pretty hard gear. So we'll just nail that nail in. I'll come back and punch them later, and that will secure that rail in place. There's room for a second nail there, you can drop that in later. Um, possibly run around and just tack them all in, in place first, just make sure you're happy with everything, and then come back and nail them off. So. All right, so once you've run around and screwed all the bottom trimmers, or nailed all the bottom trimmers in place, um, you'll find there's only five bottom trimmers. So use one of your, your mid trimmers just to finish the hexagon off so you can make sure all the posts are in the right place. Just screw that one temporarily in place and we'll, we'll remove that later when we've got to put it back up above us. Um, one other thing you should probably check at the moment, once, once all these are in position, just check back to your original nail that all of your positions out are about the same because you might find, especially if you use rough sawn timber like we have, the timber varies a bit in size. There's a lot of, there's a lot of inaccurate material um, when it comes to rough sawn timber. So 
you, you might find even though you were setting out to 1200 to the back of them all you might find when you get to that last one it's not exactly the same so you'll need to just f do a few fine adjustments just to get that to all those diagonal measurements about the same once that's done we're then going to run around and uh, and ram some dirt around these posts with some with them plumb and then we're going to jump up the top and do the roof once you've done the post then it's time to put the top trimmers around um, what I'm doing at the moment, I've already got some of them in. The, uh, the initial thing we need to do is to just screw them together at their intersection. Now I've laid these out in the workshop and numbered each joint and pre-drilled all the holes. So that's going to make life a bit easier for me. Um, so what we're going to do is pop a 75mm batten screw in there. Drill on. Put it in forward, that'd help, wouldn't it? <laughs> and screw that together. I'll just put one in from the other side as well. That keeps that whole intersection looking great. Now, once you've done that, just hang that back up. Stay. Once you've done that, we then want to push those two rafters so that they sit neatly in our joint that we cut on the top of our post. And we're going to drill a hole down, I don't know if you can see at the angle there, but we'll try. We're going to drill a hole down through there into the top of the post. I'm going to run around and do that in each of the six positions. And that's going to lock all this together so that then when it's time to put the rafters up, we've got this rigid hexagon there ready to take our rafters. The two primary rafters, they go together first, like that. So we're gonna screw that together with a batten screw, and then we'll put up the, the secondary and tertiary rafters. All right, once those primary rafters have been screwed together, it's time to put up the secondary and tertiary rafters. Just before I get onto that, I probably should mention, don't try and do this off a ladder. It's a little bit high and a little bit, yeah, just not safe. So. I've built myself a quick scaffold here out of a pallet and a couple of bits of the um, hardwood that the um, veggie patch is made out of. So make sure you you've, uh, build yourself a good work platform for putting this roof together because you need to move around as you're screwing all the joints together. Anyway, back to the job. We've got a secondary rafter goes in there like that and a tertiary rafter. in like that and they sit there from that side and then we'll have the same again on the other side just like that and if you look down on top of that it looks exactly the same as when we were looking down on top of that crown meeting point um, when we were in the workshop so I'm just going to nail these off and uh, I'll be back to you. The last process in the central hexagon is uh, putting the, the mid trimmers around. As you can see, I've, um, I've started to put them in now. When you get to the end and wonder why you're one short, remember we screwed one in across the bottom of the doorway to keep the bottom shape in the, in the right shape before, um, before we built the roof. So just unscrew that one. And then that'll go up there. Nail that one off. Remember to put the blocks, make your life a bit easier rather than trying to balance that piece of timber. Put the blocks there. Tap it into position. And then nail it off. And that'll be the central part finished. And believe me, that's actually the hardest part of this whole structure. We're then going to move on and start, start to do each of the individual segments that the, eventually will house the chickens and the veggie bays. Um, so I'm going to nail this off and then we'll get into that.